Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Chambers uh, and I'm joined here with uh, Jason Evans and we're both Attic Cameras and QSI. Okay, so what I'd like to do today is talk about the CCD discontinuations again and but look forward a little bit more positively about what comes next. So we're making this video end of 2019, looking into 2020, and it's a good time to do a bit of crystal ball gazing. But just to kind of think where this video has come from, the reason for making it, I've had uh, Sony CCDs uh, announce their discontinuation within 2025, and they're a really major part of the amateur astronomy market. We had on semi just a couple of months ago announcing that they were discontinuing, uh, and then that's with effect from next year. So Sony CCDs was, as machine vision applications moved across the CMOS. On semi was a bit more of the automotive, but also some machine vision. Uh, so that really just leaves a couple of companies still making CCDs. This is uh, Hamamatsu in Japan, and we have E2V just down the road. Now, by coincidence, uh, Jason, you've joined us about six months ago, and your previous employer was, remind me again? Uh, E2V. That's it, really. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's a happy business. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so you were sales and... Uh, uh, yes, sales and business development yeah. uh, across uh, about five years with E2B yeah. uh, in a variety of roles before uh, coming to join uh, here in Attic uh, yeah. as sales and marketing director. So Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Uh, so just, just give a bit of... Can we talk around a little bit about E2V? So they, they're called business is in... Uh, so the core business within the, the imaging world is very much in... Uh, space imaging. Uh, yes. So they work with uh, a variety of the, uh, the big national uh, bodies, so NASA, uh, the European Space Agency, Chinese Space Agency, uh, and they are providing uh, CCD imaging sensors into all of those organisations for most of the major space missions that we hear yeah. about in the news. And we did pop down a couple of weeks ago to have a chat with some of your ex-colleagues. Absolutely. So thank you very much for the introductions, a great group of people. Uh, so it's very apparent their large level investment that's going into that company at the moment. Oh, absolutely. The the site there is well, it's as you uh, yes. discovered uh, significantly bigger than you realise. Yeah. Um, but the investment behind the uh, closed doors is quite significant. So uh, whereas at the moment they are working largely with a six inch wafer, uh, they are investing very heavily in capital equipment to move up to an eight inch. Yeah. Platform. And eight inch wafers within CCDs. Are Pretty unknown. So I know Sony used to work on eight inch. On semi, I was used to be six inch. Well, there's the Kodak sensors. So this is a major bit of investment that not many companies are able to consider. Absolutely. And you couldn't do that on the basis of thinking CCDs may be obsolete in a couple of years' time. No, quite. So these sensors are very much being used for uh, scientific experiments, both ground-based and space-based. Uh, and obviously it would appear there's been a, a bigger and bigger drive to make sure that uh, those sensors are fit for purpose yes, and yes. Uh, that is covering a variety of missions requirements. So the, the specifications are obviously going to get ever more uh, complex and mm. challenging. So E2V are having to uh, evolve and adapt uh, and invest to make sure yeah. that they can meet those challenges. And it appears at the moment they're very successful in attracting uh, certainly, yeah. Fat business, aren't they? Quite so. I think a couple of the, the projects they're working on, things like Plato, Sentinel, the LSST, yeah. uh, Plato itself is a 42 million euro project. So. Yeah, and the the application that, that Plato was looking for? Uh, so that is looking for exoplanets. Yeah. Uh, so that combined with a couple of other projects which are yeah. coming live, the James Webb Telescope, yeah. uh, are all starting to, well, actually starting, helping to expand uh, the, the toolbox. Uh, yeah. Uh, for a, well, the professional astronomy market primarily. And I think that really speaks very much over if us amateur astronomers are going to make use of some of some of that technology. We have been depending upon business models that have needed to be selling into volume into machine vision or volume into automotive applications. This is a bit of a diversion if we start to consider E2V. Uh, absolutely. So whilst they, they have a section of the business which is CMOS focused and will uh, be looking at high volume run rates, yeah. uh, the CCD business is very much low volume, high precision, yeah. high specification. Uh, so they, they have a, uh, a wafer fab uh, and are obviously creating the CCDs, but um, this is not just a short term one project uh, yeah. gambit yeah. for them. This Don't is very much a long term investment to be able to deliver 
a CCD capability long into the future. Yeah, so I think we can really see there that the professional astronomy community, the scientific imaging community, and also elements of defence are pretty heavily invested and will continue to see CCD as the solution that they need. Uh, absolutely. So ETV is a really good example where they have CMOS technology available, they have the CCD technology available, but still the, the major organisations are asking companies like ETV yeah. for the CCDs for, yeah. uh, for their applications. So it's a, it's a ringing endorsement for CCD yeah. uh, and something that helps to give confidence both to ourselves uh, and hopefully to the, uh, the astrophotography yeah. um, market that CCD is here uh, for the longer haul than it is. Yeah, yes. So I, I think realistically, we could say if we're going to start to have a look at our crystal ball and see, see what it's telling us, uh, as we move over the next few years, we can see the, the affordable side of astroimaging, amateur astroimaging, really starting to go you know, more and more down the CMOS route. Now we should say at this point, if anybody hasn't bought an Attic 460 yet, you should be considering buying an Attic 460 because it's an awesome camera. Uh, but taking as you know, 2025, if we can no longer get those sensors, sensors then CMOS will start to fill Absolutely. that void in the low cost side of things. Yeah, no doubt. But there are people who have invested pretty heavily in high end mounts, high end telescopes, who will want to know what is it that they can put on their Richie Cretian telescopes that can really make use of that focal length. Absolutely. And um, CCDs with reasonable size pixels seem to be the way forward for that group of people. Certainly seems like the most obvious partnership for the longer term because um, yes, the, the existing technologies aren't going to be around forever. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to know that there is something suitable. It is, yeah. So we're looking on, we're looking at continuing selling our on semi based uh, cameras over the next couple of years. Yeah. But then we, we, I don't want attic cameras to come out of CCD cameras at all. So we'll be looking to invest either in Hamamatsu or ETV and make some uh, CCD cameras that can be used into the far future. I would think. But the good news is that after on semi goes, we 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 do still have people manufacturing CCDs, and yeah, we will look to support those CCDs. And really glad to have Jason joining us within the company because again gives us really good links with some of those manufacturers. Absolutely, and yeah, looking forward to. Um, not only meeting a variety of our customers going forwards, but yeah. to working more heavily in the industry. And the first opportunity, so I think the first astronomy show you'll be attending is end of January, beginning of February. Absolutely, Astrofest, yeah. uh, which is down in London. Down in London. So, yeah, so very much looking forward to it. We look forward to introducing you to some of the amateur astronomers. <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.